In this presentation, we'll go over some of the new features in SciGen SciCapture 4.1 release, which have to do with uh, integration with Microsoft SharePoint from a list perspective and the ability to dynamically link SharePoint lists to document libraries uh, as you're, uh, you're sending documents with multiple sets of data to the repository. So if we go ahead and take a peek in the core functionality in SciCapture, we've got some, some great flexibility when it comes to Microsoft SharePoint. We can capture uh, either through import means or scanning documents and then route them dynamically to SharePoint sites, folders, doc libraries, and now with version 4.1, lists. So when we talk about list migration, SciCapture gives you the ability to harvest data from documents and then migrate the data to a list, or you can migrate the data and the documents to a document library within SharePoint. The latest, latest version also gives you the ability to uh, selectively migrate just data to lists within all different types of SharePoint, everything from uh, 2007, 2010, to now Office 365 or SharePoint Online. So the migrated data can be used in a number of ways, everything from reporting to business intelligence, and it's very easily accessible once you post it to SharePoint by external applications or for just about any user who has access to the system. So along with the list capability in, in SciCapture 4.1, we also wrote a feature set that actually gives you the ability to link a document library and list. Okay, well, you may say to yourself, well, when would I want to do that? Um, take, for example, an invoice, an invoice that has multiple line items linked to the same individual document, or perhaps a check that pays multiple invoices. What this multiple record capability does is it sends both data and document to a doc library and it sends just the data to a list and provides the linking capability between the two. And I'll show you as I go through the demo how that actually works and, and rolls out in real life. So what's the value of this? Uh, one of the main things is um, storage conservation. So now you can send a single document that can be referenced by multiple rows. Okay, and some examples, I've already talked about the invoice. Maybe you've got an insurance policy that you're posting that covers multiple individuals, or you have a, um, a check that pays multiple invoices. So it saves on storage, and now that list data can also be used for other uses, as I mentioned in a previous slide. Now that I've given you a quick overview, let's go ahead and take a peek at uh, site capture in action. And let's kick off a capture process. And in this example, we'll use invoices. And what I'll do is show you how we can actually um, populate uh, index fields for each of the line items on an invoice, process them, do the whole quality assurance step, and then migrate them to uh, a SharePoint library in list. So let's go ahead and import a document in this particular step. And I'll, I'll kick off the capture process with site capture. You can assume that I've gone to my copier or my network scanner and, and scanned to a directory. And you can see I've brought in three separate invoices. And as I move into the indexing step, I'm going to let SiteCapture do some of the hard work for me and extract the header information from the invoices. So you'll see it'll go ahead and, and pre-process the documents to make my life a little bit easier. And I've extracted uh, a fax number. And from the fax number, I'm going to do a database lookup and bring back the vendor name. And you can see I've got my uh, my invoice number was auto extracted, my date, my invoice total. But when I get to my line items, what I can do is uh, is come into the product and, and click on, um, on the item, the quantity, and then the unit cost and extended cost. And when I'm uh, ready for another record, I just hit my insert key. And you'll see now I can add another record. So now I can come in and add my uh, my second line really quickly. Kick through here, insert another record, and you can see it carries all the uh, the pertinent header information from page uh, from uh, record set to record set. So it makes it really easy for me to come in and 
and enter this information. So I'll go ahead and enter it. When I'm done, I hit tab and it goes to the next invoice. Does the lookup for me, gathers the invoice number, the invoice total, and then I have the ability to come into the uh, each individual line number or line item uh, bit of information. Now these last two invoices are are fairly simple because they're uh, they're individual line item numbers, so it makes it really quick to come through, get my quantity and all my my data entered. Now once I'm done entering my data, I can go ahead and um, do a quality assurance step. You can see that my first uh, invoice has three records assigned to it or three sets of data. Typically this would cause uh, a challenge with any other type of SharePoint capture application where I've got these multiple sets of data assigned to the same document, but there's really no way to link them all together um, unless you do some custom workflow or custom coding in the back end with Microsoft SharePoint. Uh, we've taken care of all that for you. So now if I click the done button, it'll go through, convert these to searchable PDFs, and then migrate them into SharePoint. Now I've already, already done that whole process for you. So let's go ahead first and come in and look at my invoices library. And as I migrated those from Site Capture, I created a, a folder for my, uh, my vendors, and it'll auto-create it upon the first migration. And you can see I've got a PDF, and if I click on my PDF, I can go ahead and view it in the, the SharePoint interface. Okay. And you can see I've got some selective information that I've sent. Now I didn't send all the line item information into the document library because this is just my reference set. I want an invoice number, invoice date, vendor name, and maybe a total so I can do some column based searching uh, or search this fully text searchable PDF. Where the real magic comes into play is that uh, when we auto populate that list, so if I come down to my uh, invoice line items list, what you're going to see is that for each individual invoice, I go ahead and populate uh, a row with all the line item data. So now I've got a full data set okay, with all my invoice numbers, all my line items that can uh, you know, possibly be routed for approval to, to different folks based on how you would do a workflow. Um, I can click on any of these items and it actually takes me um, into the record and I can open the document that's pre-linked from uh, from the list to the document library all based on that invoice number okay so it's a real nice feature um, lets you gather both data and document push them into uh, you know a separate doc library and a list but link them all together and keep the relationships there Okay, just makes it very easy to do that whole process. So that's an overview of the new list functionality along with that uh, library to list link that we can create for you. If you have any questions, you can give us, uh, send an email to uh, sales at SciGen.com or you can call 949-916-7700 uh, extension 230. Thanks.